it's well known. Certainly if you live in Old Heath or on the Mersey Road side of Colchester, it's a vast area. Um, you know, decades and generations of children have played over here. Um, people go walking over there. This picture we're looking at now, I just took this about two weeks ago. Uh, you know, just during lockdown, people from the area go for a walk on the wick. But it's, be, it's, it's coming to the news in recent times um, because you're probably all aware of the threat of this. Um, save the wick, no to housing, yes to a country park. And of course the, the plan is that they're planning on building about a thousand homes on the wick. Um, the, the army's selling it off apparently in 2022. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Um, and uh, so we thought it would be a good idea because it's topical. Um, I say to get a bit of oral history out and listen to a few people and just tell a few stories from um, the interviews that we've done over the um, period. Once this is finished, I'll stop sharing and we'll, and we'll come back together and uh, that'll give you a chance if you want to ask any questions or if anybody wants to comment on their memories of the week, perhaps. So let's move on. I thought was, before we get into the interviews, I just thought I'd talk a little bit about the history of the wick, where it all comes from. And you may have seen this, but this is Chapman Andre's map of Essex, um, showing the Colchester area, 1777. So we've been over 200 years old. And um, here at the top here, of course, we've got the town center of Colchester shaded in dark. And if we come out into this area, um, this is the Old Heath Road coming up here, what we call the Old Heath Road. There's Old Heath. And what we can see here, for example, is Monk Wick. So there's Monk, that's where Monk Wick is now. And over here we have Battles Wick. And in the middle, we have Middle Wick, probably named because it was in between Monk Wick and Battles Wick. And we used to have another wick. We used to have one up here called Cannons Wick. It later became Canwick, and nowadays most people call it Canick, Canick Mill. But it was it was called it was always known as Canners Cannons Wick, and a wick the word wick signifies a farm, um, typically a dairy farm. So these are old established farms. So the Cannons Wick, now Cannons Wick was owned by the Cannons of St Buttles Priory, so they owned that. That's why it was the the dairy farm of the Cannons. Monkwick, well the name gives it away, it was owned by the monks of St John's Abbey. So Monkwick was the dairy farm of the monks of St John's Abbey. Um, they also owned Middlewick, uh, St John's Abbey, and Battleswick was a separate manor. Um, owned, they got its name from one of the former lords of the manor called Richard Battle, who used to be the Lord of Wivenhoe. And the, the manors of Battleswick and Wivenhoe descended together un, until about the 17th century. Then it, it came on its own. And the manor of Battleswick, if you follow the river on the east all the way up, right up to, say, Distillery Pond, that would be the eastern boundary. Donnyland would be the, at the bottom. And then the Old Heath Road would form the other boundary. So that big chunk of land between Old Heath Road Row Hedge and the river is Battleswick Manor. And the rest of it going over here is West Donnelland. West Donnelland was a, a huge manor. You can see it written on here. Um, but anyway, so there's um, just a little bit of an idea of where, where we're situated. So let me just show you another slide. I, I hope you can see this, but this is Old Heath. We're, we're mainly talking about Middlewick at the moment. So we're looking at Old Heath and we can look at, there, there's Battleswick Farm. That's almost in Row Hedge, isn't it? That, that is still there. That's still being used as a farm. Um, Cleveland's farm, that is still there, although it's um, not actually used as a farm at the moment. But in the late Victorian period, up until about the First World War, that was a major brick fields. That, they used to make bricks there. Um, coming up, Place Farm, just, just past the, where the Bell Pub used to be. Many people will remember Place Farm and um, Vic Ardley, who used to run that. I remember going up there for bales of hay and straw for the rabbits. And then we keep going north, we've got Burnt House Farm. Burnt House Farm um, probably started as a wooden building that got burnt down. That's how these names came about. But that um, is now, it, it was virtually, if you go down the modern um, Whitehall Road estate, 
And as you're going down there, down towards the river, you'll pass um, a trailer park on your right called Grange Farm Trailer Park. Well, Burnt House Farm later changed its name to Grange Farm. And when the farm was all sold off, um, they kept a little bit for the, for the caravan site. Further up, we've got the distillery, we can see. And then we've got Whitehall Farm. Whitehall Farm, the, the entrance to Whitehall Farm is still there. It's not far from where the shops are at Old Heath. Uh, a little lane that goes down to the garages on Cavendish Avenue, that's Whitehall Farm. So Runwald's Farm, now that is right at the end of what is now Abbott's Road. Abbott's Road, this is the Old Heath Road. Abbott's Road goes up there. And nowadays it goes right over to the Mersey Road. But originally it stopped here. And that was St Runwald's Farm. Another little one here, Old Heath Farm. And then we have Middlewick Farm. And it was Middlewick Farm in the in 1856 that became the first large plot of land that the military um, purchased in Colchester and here are a couple of news clips um, from the year 1856 the, the the size of the farm was 167 acres so that was the first plot of land the army bought and over the years they added lots of other farms you know, um, Reed Hall, Barn Hall, all sorts of farms. And by about 1930s, 40s, they owned about 5,000 acres and they probably still do, maybe more. Land at Fingman Ho as well. But it all started off with 160 acres here. And we says here, it says, we also hear that the government is in treaty for the purchase of Middlewick Farm and that Major General Gascoigne, who at the present time has resided at the Cups Hotel, has taken White Hall on the Fingman Ho Road, they called it, as a permanent residence, and his family arrived there last evening. What we now call the Old Heath Road was called Fingman Ho Road, because it went to Fingman Ho. And White Hall, it's not there anymore, but if you look at White Hall Farm here, White Hall Mansion stood just a little bit to the north of that there, or to the west of it, I should say. And, um, and I mean, some of you may, well, no, I don't think anybody would remember it here tonight. Um, they pulled it, they sold it off and pulled it down in the early 1930s, about 1931. But, um, and down the bottom here, this other one, look, this is interesting. It tells us that the government paid £10,800 for Middlewick Farm in 1856. It's about £65 an acre um, is what they paid. If we look at this picture, this is um, from an Ordnance Survey map from 1921. There's Whitehall Farm. There's the Old Heath Road. That's the old Whitehall Road. And just over this side was Whitehall. That's the mansion. There was a little driveway going along here to a little lodge on the Old Heath Road. And people can remember carriages going up there, up to the house. And, there, and the farm, the entrance to the farm, you could also go round to the back of Whitehall that way. And originally, um, well in the early 19th century, it was owned by um, first of all, Samuel Bawtree and later George Saville, who owned the distillery um, where we have Distillery Pond now. And it was about 20 acres, 20 acres of land. And the only known picture of Whitehall is this one. The only one that I've ever been able to find, that, that was Whitehall. And um, in, certainly in the early 1900s, 1920s, it was owned by Captain Eind. Um, he died in the 20s and when his wife died they sold it off by auction that plus 20 acres and then they built as you can see here they start this is 1938 and they've made a start on Littlebury Gardens Cavendish Avenue Canwick Grove they haven't done Barn Hall yet you can see it's all dotted and Cavendish Avenue originally stopped here look and you can see they've started putting a few buildings and bringing the road round to join on to go around the back here. So this is what, so where Littlebury Gardens and all that is now, that was all part of the Whitehall estate. And, and then in, again, once they'd purchased the farm, it was a going concern. So they auctioned off all the live and dead stock. And we can see here, there's horses, 100 ewes, 100 lambs, tups, um, horses, harnesses. And on this side, we can see 40 tons of clover, straw, two heaps of manure, seven and a half acres of beetroot, 14 acres. Of, the, the whole thing was sold off and it became a drill ground. And um, 
a firing ground. I thought this was interesting. This is just to show you the wick, is if you like. And then this isn't the whole wick, but this this bit here, look, is basically what we call the wick. All this bit here. This is the, what we call the speedwell road estate, speedwell road, Chevling road, etc. And these people went out of their back gardens onto these fields. And 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 just to have this is the old Heath Road coming up here. Look, okay. Um, just by comparison, this here look is the recreation ground. And we think that's quite big, don't we? That is Abbey Fields. So now you can appreciate how big, how big this wick is. A lot of it now is fenced off. A few years ago, the army fence put a fence all the way along here, right the way along here, along here and along there. So they don't want people wandering around here while they're firing bullets and what have you. So the public can only use this area, this bit here and that bit there now. But this is um, an image I took the other day and that was taken, these people are walking along this fence here, going in that direction. Um, and that will eventually take them to Abbots Road, which you can see running along here. Look, that's where Liddles is. And it comes around here and joins on to the Mersey Road and, and off it goes. So let's move on to a little bit of oral history. People have said, yes, to us, the wick was a giant playground. Um, plenty of room, plenty of room for everybody. But I want to start off by um, not an audio one, but just introduce you to one of the older gentlemen that I got to know in the early days. And this is to do, this was a chap called Steve Mason. Now, many Old Heath people will know of Mason's garage, Old Heath. Um, this is on the left. This is the first garage he had. This picture probably dates from about 1920, maybe a bit earlier, about 1920. This was the next garage they built, Mason's Garage. That would be 1930s onwards. And then we've got something like this here now. And there's, um, there's Mr. Mason, that's the father, that's his car, an early car there. I'm, I'm not sure whether you could trace that number plate, it'd be quite interesting. But um, so there they are. And this is the yeah, M. Mason, that's him, that's McGregor. McGregor Mason. The family came from Dedham and apparently he was the head gardener for the Lord of the Manor at Dedham before he came to Colchester and set up a garage business. And that's Steve. That's the man I interviewed. Steve Mason, born in 1906, interviewed him in 1989. He really was a bit of a character, um, Steve. Um, he left school when he was 14 and uh, apart from having this garage, his father also owned two other shops two other um, well, shops, cycle shops and motorcycle shops, one in Crouch Street and one in Molden Road. I've got a picture of the Molden Road one, that's the, the Mason's Molden Road store. But Steve, when he left school, went to look after the Crouch Street shop, which specialised in motorcycles only. And he said he was paid two shillings a week. And he said, I stuck that out for three years and I still only got two shillings a week. So at the end of that time, he left and joined the army at the age of 17. And he said, my wages went up to 14 shillings a week. And he, he joined the mounted unit. So he had to learn to ride horses. And he stayed in the army for about seven years. And he says, when I came out of the army, I decided to join Bertram Mills's circus. And apparently he spent six seasons traveling around the country, everywhere with Bertram Mills. And um, he was telling me this story um, and I don't know how much exaggeration he puts onto this, but he said the, they had a very vicious polar bear in the circus at the time. And on one occasion, this polar bear bit the trainer's head off. That's what he told me. So I, I kind of, he also told me that, he also gave me an eyewitness account of the great English earthquake that happened in 1884. And I, I didn't like to say, well, you, you weren't even born. But I, th I think, so he was a bit of a character. So I hope that doesn't detract from what he told me about the wick. Anyway, um, this is what he said, look. We'll, we'll read this together. We used to play with live bullets. The soldiers used to fire all their bullets from trenches in the ground over the wick. And when they stopped firing, we used to nip over there, see if we could find some of those live bullets. We would then take these bullets and make a hole in the bark of a tree and push them in. We then used to get our catapults with some stones and see if we could hit these bullets. And if you hit one, it didn't half go up. I remember on one occasion, my eldest brother blew the top of his thumb off, playing around with these bullets in the shed. Apparently he had one of them in a vice and was trying to tap the top of the bullet off. Um, 
so anyway that's that's a little start for us so that's steve we move on to another um individual who many old Heath people will know of this is edna mills born in 1918 and i interviewed her as you can see in 1993 when she was about 75. edna lived um her family when she was a child and don't forget this is like through the 20s um she lived in wick road it was a, a just inside wick road there was um a small group um, of cottages met four cottages and they never had water they there was one little standpipe near the footpath and all four people in th those four cottages had to walk down to the road to get their water this is 1920s and although old heath had water the mains are laid on in 1900 1901 that was only if you were on the main road <laughs> so anyway she had an interesting tale to tell um i'm not i'm not sure um well let's carry on i just wonder if we've got any people waiting to come in andrew but um this picture here this um this little news item speaks it says about a woman and child were shot now the child was something different but edna was playing over Donovan Woods when she got so shot by a soldier and should we listen to Edna telling us what actually happened and were you allowed to play outside yes oh yes near the streets and the roads oh and yes and on the wick yeah, what was yeah. the wick like I mean it's the same as today is it or uh very similar except behind were you allowed to play outside yes oh yes near the streets and the roads oh and yes and on the wick yeah. What was the wig like? I mean, the same as today, is it? Or? Uh, very similar, except behind the front butt. I mean, uh, to me, there's all bushes over there now, but it was green and a big oak tree in the very, very middle of the field. And behind the first butt, the army threw all their rejects from the, from the quarters. Saucepans, kettles, Bacon tins, and we children had a lovely time with them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Tell me, I think it's time now, tell me the story about the accident that you had. Oh, when I was in my teens. How did that happen? Well, I was taking, I told a friend at work about how we go and pick the um, chestnuts over Donland Woods. So she came up, she lived down Maidenborough Street, and she came up to me and there was um, my niece came and I had an Alsatian dog of my sister's and although the flag was up in Donland Woods we went in because we had done it as children and I don't think we'd started picking up chestnuts before there was this thud on my leg and I had water boots on but I never found the bullet, but it went completely through the Wellington boot, through my leg and out the other side. Did you realise what had happened? Um, well, I did when I put my hand in the back of my boot, because I could see feel blood coming out that side. But I didn't realise, not when it happened. It was just like a heavy stone sort of went into you. Did it knock you over? No, no, no. Tougher than that. Yes. So what happened then? What did you do? Well, my niece was the one that was more worried than anything. She was running on ahead and then we got through the woods and I saw a car come along and I put my hand up and I said, would you be kind enough to take me home? I said to old Heath, I said, I've been shot. Uh, anyway, we all got in this car and got to old Heath and uh, he puts off at the bottom of Wick, Wick Lane. And I said to my niece, Janet, I said, now, go over there. That's Dr. Clendon's car over there. I said, wait until he comes out of the house and tell him that, um, ask him to come up to Forwick Road and tell him what happened. And he came up and um, he said, oh, well, I can't do anything about that. He said, we'll have to have an ambulance and go to hospital. So I spent the weekend in hospital. <laughs> How old were you? Um, I think it must have been about 18 or 19. So what happened when you got to the hospital? Well, I was news, you know. I was on the placards that day. Young woman shot in woods near Colchester. <laughs> well, they just had a look at it and filled the holes up with some white powder. 
and said I was to stay there in case anything sort of came from it. Um, and everybody came to visit me. Thought that was. <laughs> Did the press come? No, they didn't. No, no, they got the story. There's somebody in there was in at the same time as me and had got um, rabbit. Somebody had been shooting and they'd got all these little pellets all over their chest. And they thought it was the same one, but it wasn't. I mean, it wasn't. They weren't pellets that I had. They reckoned it was an O22 that and went they, through me. Did they ever trace where it came from? Oh, yes, the, the um, range on the wick. And was there an investigation or anything? Or was it just no, because it was my fault. I shouldn't have gone through the red flag. Mm. I met people when we were coming out, a couple we knew from Speedwell Road, and um, I said, are you going in the woods? And they said, yes. I said, well, I've just been shot in there. But they carried on. <laughs> yes. I mean, we used to hear the bullets whiz in there. I mean, the times I thought afterwards, um, it could have been so much worse. It didn't touch a bone. It went, um, it went through the. I have got more at the back from the right. It went right through that muscle part, mm -hmm. just at the side there. That's Anyway, we'll, we'll move on. So that was quite interesting. And we're going to finish off with a little sort of medley of um, um, snippets here. And um, it's nice to say we've got two of these people with us this evening. So first of all, on, we haven't got Glad. Glad Gladys Rudd on the very left um, couldn't be here, but she's um, she born in 1927. And then we've got, um, she lives near Scarlet's now. Uh, we've got Sandra, she lives in Old Heath. Um, the middle, we've got Joy. Um, she's brought up in Old Heath, but she's now up in Liverpool somewhere. And then we have Martin Broom, who's with us tonight. So thank you. And we've also got Keith, Keith Moss here tonight. So let's finish off by hearing. Now, what you, the, these little interviews run into each other, so they're all joined together. But let's see how we go. And what would you do um, in the summer evenings? Were you allowed to go out and play in the streets? And... We used to practically live over the week. Over the week? Yeah. We used to be gang of Mum Mum didn't mind as long as we were with them by not to go on our own, but there'd be a whole crowd of us go. Yeah. yeah. And what did you do, do over there then? I can remember one of the boys had a box of matches and set fire. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> set fire the cross bushes. Oh. And we all ran. Yeah. Goodness. We all ran and you could see that was way up above the, yeah. the flames were way above the bar. Yeah. And we ran, and of course they, they sent for the police. <laughs> I remember Teddy Butcher, Teddy Butcher's brother, he fell off the chair when he saw the policeman go up the road. He thought yeah. they were coming for him and they weren't even with oh, us. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny, yeah. really. Yeah. Of course, the, the boy who'd done it, he, he told the police, no, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. And when he went, yeah. his mum said, Bernie. That was you, weren't it? He said, yes. <laughs> he wouldn't tell the policeman. <laughs> and of course the soldiers used to do firing over there, didn't they? Yeah, well, because we couldn't go over there while they were firing. Did you ever used to go and find the old bullet shells and things? Yeah, because the boys would straight down to look, see if there was any bullets or cases and yeah, that, you know. Yeah. Now you're also telling me um, the wick was a bit of a playground for you. So yeah, we what, what did you do in the evenings or weekends when you were not at school? What As we got older... We used to go over what we called the butts, the firing range. And when they weren't firing, we used to play over there, up and down the sand, the butts. So the whole gang of you, or? Um, it used to be a few girls, sometimes a few boys used to be over there. And your mum and dad didn't mind you going out on your own in those days? No, we could go anywhere. Um, I can remember as young as, I would say, eight. I'm thinking back like my grandchildren's size. About eight, we used to be able to go over the whip. We could be out all day. We could take jam sandwiches or paste, whatever mum had, and a bottle of homemade lemonade, just by the sherbet. Put it in the bottle with a pot. Um, no, mum had no worries whatsoever. And you'd be gone for the whole day? Yeah, we could be gone the whole day. Yeah. We even used to go and sit. I know it sounds strange, but my nan was <laughs> buried over there. And they've got little huts over there, aren't they? I don't know whether you've been over there lately. Um, like little, the cemetery? Yeah, the cemetery, little wooden huts. We used to sit in there and have a picnic. 
as children because we had all this military ground at Old Heath. Um, we used to go over there and sort of take picnics and sort of light fires and cook food. I mean, very sensibly. We didn't do anything stupid. There was a little stream went through that we used to dam up and sort of um, try and swim it and do all kinds of things there. The boys we used to go down to the Roman River and the boys used to have um, the petrol tanks that were dropped from aircraft. They'd sort of cut a bit out and weigh them with sandbags and use them for canoes and paint them up so that uh, this was something else that sort of went on. We used to go and swim in the sand pits at um, Row Hedge because you weren't allowed to go down to the sort of coast at all, though we had a Sunday school. We, used to have we would run fairly wild over the wick and so on. Tell me about uh, that there. So you were allowed to wander away from the house? Yes, it's difficult to put an age on it. Yeah. But but certainly when I was still at junior school, we would go over the wick by ourselves and play football there. And uh, Is it just you and your brother or was there a bit of a We would meet other it? children over there, yes. Yeah. yeah. So the, your wick was a giant playground for you? It was it? a giant playground. Um, as it was, we would meet other children from Shevling Road, Speedwell Road. I remember playing football with Bobby Hunt, for example. He, he was somewhat older than us, and uh, yeah. he, he would put six of us in goal and shoot at us. Really? <laughs> because I mean, he, he was pretty good. Yeah. Um, but we were, you know, I can picture being way over to the butts. Um, I, I can picture walking around there and hearing, bu hearing bullets whine around, which didn't worry us at the time. And how close they were, I don't know, but I, I can distinctly remember hearing bullets being fired. And, uh, did they still have the flag system then? Oh, very much so, yes. So yeah. they didn't sort of worry, worry you children? Did they? No, no, no it's not at all. No. Did no, you hear the bullets? Did you ever go looking for the shells and things? Yes, often. Yes, we, 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 we would go into the butts themselves and dig around in the sand, but also go on to the positions where they fired from and uh, look for the shell casings. Uh, oh, and, yes, I used to collect those and whistle through them. And, uh, oh, right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you were telling me the other time you used to play football at the... You, yeah, you I, was, I, was, picture, I, I was the back on the wick. Yeah. That was Sunday mornings was the best one because they used to turn up, say about 10 o'clock, and they used to turn up and there'd be, say, 20 of us and they'd pick up sides, just toss up and pick up sides and there'd be 10 on one side and 10 on the other. And they'd say, well, whoever comes next is on your team, whoever comes next is on your team. And we used to finish up with, say, 30 or 40 people up there on a Sunday morning. All the bigger boys and us little boys were allowed to play sometimes, but then... The latter part, as you say, that photograph you had with us boys, we used to play, um, we used to cycle over to Lair, did a hay, and we played, I remember it was Tom Collins, he came from there, we used to play football against his team, and then we used to play against the lads from Hamilton Road, Gordon Buck went to Hamilton Road, we used to go to the Garrison A ground and play football over there on a Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon, play football. <coughs> and that was with the now Taurus Hunt family, All right. the, which was Dad only had one leg, Mr Hunt, and Mrs Hunt had a withered arm, and they had Derek, Peter, who was on that picture, Ronnie, Billy and Bobby. And Derek played football for Ipswich Town, Peter didn't play football, I don't think only for us local and play for the school, Ronnie of course was a notorious Colchester United footballer. Billy did play for Colchester Reserves, I think. And of course, Bobby was a lot younger and he played for the U's as a sort of. But my Ronnie was sort of six months older than me and Billy was a year younger than me. So would uh, Ronnie play with you boys? Oh, yes, we all so played together over the week. Was he always so. a good footballer in those days? Oh, yes, always. Yep. So you knew he was better than everyone else? Oh, yeah, he was a head and shoulders above everybody else when we played over there. It was, it was very nice. I said we were. There's lots of lads. I mean, we had some really good times. We used to go over there, blackberry picking. We used to bring them down and sell them to Mr. Johnson down the road at the bottom of Abbott's Road here. And um, then we used to go scrumping apples sometimes over in the Alders. Where's that? <laughs> That's the, the, where the sand pit is now when you go along Fingernow Road, yeah. past the head of Old Heath and on the yeah, corner yeah. where the sand pit is now. There used to be an Alders orchard there. They used to have a spade of apples in the middle and they had two rows of ordinary coxes around the outside. Mm -hmm. And um, we used to sort of nip, to dig a hole and dip under the wire and pick up the apples. And yeah. the, drop ones was, the drop ones was the main thing. But I always remember many years later, George, who used to work for Mr Nolder, he used to say, 
Being a new boy used to go over there, he said, but we never used to worry about the outside trees there because we knew you'd pinch them anyway. So we never used to bother with them, one. <laughs> they used to chase us off when they used to, we used to hear the dogs come. We used to scarp underneath and yeah. before we went to school, we used to do that sometimes. So that was, uh, that, that's almost where we'd finish. Um, this, this picture which Keith gave me, um, who Keith has just been speaking, I, I'll just run through um, who they are. This, from the left at the back, is Peter Keeble. That's Keith, Keith Moss, Peter Hunt, Nelson Blowers, Ronald Farrow, Alec Nevard, front row on the left, Dougie Oliver, Gordon Buck, Jerry Wainford, Tommy, oops, I've gone to the next one. Tommy Moorcroft. Can I go back one? Tommy Moorcroft and Hugh Harvey. Um, and I've got to know Hugh Harvey quite well in his later years. He's passed away recently. Um, that's, that's it. Um, I hope that's been of some interest to Old Heath people. Most of the information um, came from this Old Heath Memories book. So if you're interested um, in learning more about Old Heath or the other book, Old Heath Past, um, you could try looking at these. Um, the Old Heath Past book, I think, is out of print, so it might be a Amazon or something. But this um, Old Heath Memories book, I've still got some of the, I've got quite a few here. So if anybody wanted one, they were at a bargain price of £6. They were funded by the Old Heath Community Trust. And if anybody wants to send me an email uh, on the screen there now, we can arrange how you could get hold of one if you like.